We have just discussed the architecture of regular grasshopper components, the ones that take data as an input, they crunch some operation inside of it, and they spit out some data as an output. That is the most common way of grasshopper working, uh, grasshopper components working. Um, and because these components represent a function, represent an operation, right? Um, however, there is a handful of components that are not that do not follow exactly that paradigm, that are not exactly uh, boxes or operations that data flows through in and out. Um, uh, it's more components that help us work with uh, the information and generate parameters and analyze those parameters that we will feed in into other components. Most of those components are living here on the first tab, on the one that says parameters. And most of these are either work as pure inputs or they work as pure outputs, but they're essentially tools to help us uh, navigate and operate with the rest of the normal grasshopper components. The ones that take input, they crunch some data, and then they export some output. Um, and these two components that I went on over very fast, the sliders and the panels, they fall into that category. They fall into the category of parameter components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete them and I'm going to explain them over a little bit better. Um, sliders, for example, here, if you go to parameters, inputs, number slider, if you drop this component here, a slider is a component that has a specific UI that lets you drag this knob around the range of the slider and therefore the output, so this knob here, the output of this component will be uh, whichever number you are selecting with the UI. So for example, if I drop a panel here and I connect this slider to the panel, you can see that to the panel, I'm just giving it directly this number that I am controlling with my slider. Okay, um, so, but what's interesting is that sliders, of course, are very heavily customizable. Uh, by default, when you drag a slider, uh, the slider has a range from zero to one with three decimals. But very often, we will want to customize that. So for example, here for this construct point, if we just, what we had before was these three sliders from zero to one. So that basically would let us build a point that is reduced to the one, one, one dimension space in 3D, uh, in 3D space, right? And we probably want to have the point have a larger um, area that it, that it could live in, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on top of the slider. And then there's a couple of things that I can do. So for example, here, there is a text box that allows me to write in my custom name for the value of this slider. So I'm going to call this, for example, X coordinate, and um, and I'm going to hit enter. So now the X, this value is this slider is going to be always called X coordinate, and this is a very very good practice, especially when you start having more complex uh, grasshopper definitions. Um, it's a very good practice so to keep things tidy, and we're going to talk a lot about that in this course. And another thing that I can do is I can right click here, and then I can say, well. Let me edit, let me customize exactly the range and the parameters that this slider is providing to the user. So for example, here you can see that in this screen, this, I can also change the name again. Uh, but something that I can do is I can say for the minimum value, I'm going to choose a larger, for the maximum value, I'm going to choose a larger value. So for example, 10, all right? And if I do that and I press enter, you can see that my slider now goes from zero all the way to 10. All right, that makes a lot of sense. However, I want even more freedom, more range. So why not work with the minimum? The minimum, we can make it lower. We can even make it, for example, minus 10. I want my point to be able to be in the positive quadrant or in the negative quadrant. So now the range of my component is 20 units from minus 10 to plus 10. I can also choose how many decimal digits this component may give me. So if it's a real number, a floating point, then I can choose the number of decimals, or I could choose, for example, to make it a natural number, or in other words, an integer, a number with no decimal part. I can even go farther and say, for some reason, I may want this uh, 
slider to only give me even numbers. So for example, here from 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, blah, 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 or to give me just odd numbers. So, so even the, the range is now changing the, because of that. So I'm going to go back to minus 10 and positive 10, and perhaps like a little bit of less decimal precision. So I think we're going to be fine with two decimal values. And now here, I have my slider that I can customize uh, from zero, from minus 10 to plus 10. And I'm going to plug this in here. I'm going to copy it, paste it three times, control C, control V. And then uh, because I want to be like really, really tidy, I'm going to make sure that I update the names. So Z, Y and C coordinate. And as I zoom out, you can see that my point has a much larger range of movement now that I have control my sliders. Okay. So sliders are super, super important. They're the bread and butter of working with Grasshopper. And they're the easiest way to set a parameter, a value, a numerical value that we want to have as something that can vary, something that we want to play with, something that is going to be one of those, is going to represent the flexibility in one dimension that we want for some parameter of the geometry that we're going to generate with our parametric modeling system, okay? The other parameter component that I want to talk about is the panel, okay? The panel is also here in parameters, input, and panel, okay? So you can drop it here. And um, by default, if you haven't done any, if you just installed Rhino and Grasshopper, this will probably show up yellow for you. I'm going to show you how to customize the color. But panels, you can think of them as empty text boxes, okay? The only thing that they do is that they can either read text, they can either output text, or they can have text flow through them. Uh, and basically, their main purpose is either for visual feedback so that we can know what is going on through one of these wires with data. And then, uh, and sometimes in reduced cases, we can use them as, as to e output some data because you see that they have two knobs. They have an input and an output. So what you can do is, for example, if I don't really know where this point is or I lost track or blah, 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 what I can do is just to verify what is coming out of this component, I can just plug this in here and see, oh, this is a point with these three coordinates. Okay, that looks good to me. Um, and panels work in both ways. So right now I plug this in here. This is the input. So this is why we see this panel displaying this information, but it's also outputting through here, the exact same information that is going in, in from the input panels do not have the capacity to change or to operate with the information as far as I know. So if you plug this in here, we can see that uh, whatever came in is also coming out same uh, from the other end. Uh, so I could do this like infinitely and plug like a bunch of them. This is very useless. Um, I don't know why would you want to do that, but um, just for the sake of understanding how this works. Now the all uh, I will show you as well uh, very soon, farther down the road, how we can use panels also to output some information uh, and to use them as parameters. Um, but I will get to that farther down the road. Okay, so these are the two most important parameter components that we're going to be using sliders to represent numerical information that can change and that we want to be able to control and play with and panels as a way of having visual feedback on what is going on, what kind of data is going on through one of these wires that we use to connect components between each other. Okay. Oh, and I almost forgot, uh, customizing the color of panels, super, super easy. You can right click on the panel and then you can see that here where it says color, you can choose, uh, you can choose with this picker, you can choose like uh, the HSV, range so I could choose purple and I can also choose the opacity of the of the um, of the um, of the component. I'm not sure that you want anything like this, but if you want to change from yellow to white, for example, I think I'm a little bit of a minimalist. So I like simple colors. So you can just uh, go all the way to HSV and I like a little bit of transparency. So I like, for example, um, 200. 
I like to see a little bit of transparency through the panel. I think this is easier to read uh, for my taste. If you want to make this the, def the default uh, that all the rest of the components are, all the rest of the panels are going, the, the default color that all the rest of the, com blah, 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 blah. the default color that all the rest of the panels will always have, make sure that you right click here and that you set that this color should be the default for the rest of the um, of the uh, of the panels okay wonderful so um, this is going to be really helpful and with this i think we can probably start doing some basic arithmetic <laughs>